Hello and welcome back. It is me again, Mark, and this is episode three of Power Sonic Weekly. Today I am on my way back from Cardiff. Those of you who watched last week will have seen what I'm up to. It's a glorious sunny day, and um, yeah, it's making for a nice drive home. Get the tunes on, get the shades on. This week we have got a lot of exciting work to drop on the channel. I'm going to make a few separate videos around some of that work as well. We're going to show you some of the property development side of things we get up to. So we've got um, an existing outbuilding that somebody's having converted and renovated into an office space. There's a toilet room going in there. Um, we're putting heating in, we're putting some data comms in. There's quite a bit of stuff going on in there. And then we've got all of the other issues around um, building regulations and things we have to comply with to do with extraction lighting, smoke detection and such, so that is going to be on the channel primarily through the course of this week because I am there nearly every day in setting that out. So yeah, otherwise, let's get on with it. For those of you who aren't aware about Apprentice One to One, we are looking desperately for employers of electrical apprentices, so without boring you all right at the start, please go off and check out Apprentice One to One on Instagram, Facebook and the website, LinkedIn and Twitter, it's everywhere. Get involved. If you're in a position to hire an apprentice, I want to hear about it. There's thousands of people desperately looking for work and we want to help them get trained in the best way possible through the course of an apprenticeship. Let's move on with the video. So another day at the coalface and you can see behind me I'm swapping a consumer unit again. This is a grand one. There's going to be a video in its own right for this one. It'll probably be out before this PowerSonic Weekly Episode 3, so go and check that out. I'm going to get on with this. I'll show you how it turns out. So you can see behind me, I've got the board done and dressed away there. I'm just about to start the testing on it. Um, this is sort of going to be the end of the day, really. I'm going to run through the testing. If you want to see the video of how this all came together, go and check it out. Um, we've been doing a heating controller as well upstairs. It's a little bit different, so that's worth looking at. And I'll show you that in the video with the consumer unit as well. So another day out at the co-office. And I'm not always sat in the office, as this video will prove. I'm out on a job. It's one you might recognise if you've followed my channel before. This was the house that was flooded and we've changed the fuse box, done a few other bits to um, bring things up to standard. And I had a job come through to say the lights upstairs weren't working and could you revisit and attend the loss adjusters um, asked us to come back and have a look. Now instantly I thought perhaps we've done something wrong. That's your first chain of reaction, isn't it? Have we made a mistake? But it turns out not. I'll show you. If you remember from the first video, this ceiling was, well, it's probably the second video, we filmed this a few times. This ceiling was down. Um, the spotlights have all been put in by the builders, have replastered the ceiling. But if we go upstairs, you know, you can see, I was told all of the upstairs lights weren't working, and um, that one does work, but the rest are not working. And the reason being, well, I didn't need to get my test equipment out to find this fault. The um, builders have actually had to board and skim the ceiling. For those of you, again, if you go back and watch the main video on that flood damaged house, you will see we left the pendant up there. Um, as a temporary measure, so there was lighting in this room, and rather than just pop it off the ceiling and plasterboard and skim around it, the um, builders have decided to do what they've which is to put a money bag over the cables and just tape them up and leave them live. So <laughs> it's a. Uh, it's one of those things and it just shows sometimes don't doubt yourself. If you know you've done a good job, you've done a good job. These things happen in construction when other trades are in and around each other, so it's no great dramas. I can pop that pendant back up. In fact, I'll show you that in a minute. Just to say as well, this morning I went out and met Col Dixon. So that's Col Dixon Electrical. And he's just taken his son on as an electrical apprentice, Corey. I went and visited him. I'll pop a little picture up somewhere here. Uh, it was really nice actually to see a young person coming into our industry wanting to be an electrician, really keen and uh, motivated with it all. And it was a pleasure to help Colin Corey out a little bit. And that's one of the things that try and do for Apprentice One to One is actually get equipment and stuff into apprentices' hands and uh, try and encourage and support their employers as well where I can. Uh, yeah, it was really nice actually. It refocused my mind on what matters and that is the young people coming into the trade right now and retrainees who want to be electricians. I think too often we focus on this nonsense around industry bodies and how it's also terrible and the industry's in decline and all these other negative and destructive points of view that are shared very, very often. I'm focused on trying to be an effective change for things to be better in the future. In my own small little way, I realize 
I can transform an industry, but I can impact it positively. And that's what I'm trying to do with that. It's a pleasure to meet Carl and Corey, and I wish them every success going forward. Oh, well, at least I ticked a few of the ends up, I suppose. So, disaster averted. So that's looking a little bit better. Get the power on, put the cap on. Have a look if that's resolved the problem or if I need to start a bit more fault finding. Moment of truth, have I still got it? Looks like I have. <laughs> so yeah, that's another one now ticked off for today's job list. And it's one of those things, like I said, when you're working around with the builders and trades and whatnot, these things happen, you just gotta get on with it. Um, but how many of you out there, when you get a call like that, assume it's something you've done wrong? I've been doing this over 25 years now and still every time, you always first think, what did I balls up this time? When the reality is, it's usually something out of your control. I think they call that, um, what is it, catastrophe thinking or whatever. So you're always imagining the worst outcome from things. And very rarely does it become a reality. So look after your mental health and stay positive. I'm going off to the next job now and um, I'll catch up with you once we're there. So it's another day. We're out training on a roof with Stuart Cato. There's a video of this been put together as a main um, production. So you can go and check that out where you can see how this system comes together exactly what it is but I just thought I'd show you um, we're up on this roof getting some solar panels on there's an inverter obviously battery system and we'll have a little chat later on on the weekly video to see what we've got from this it's been absolutely brilliant them if you want to just stand back a second. Yeah. so when you move them you can carry them like that and you can easily walk up the roof manipulate it yeah it's a lot of practice 7.8 on this side of the roof. On the other side of the roof we've got six panels being installed, giving a total of 20, roughly 400 watts per panel, so an eight kilowatt generation system. 
These have all got Solar Edge power optimizers and there is also a Solar Edge battery system and inverter that I will show you in the garage. We're here learning how all this goes together and works thanks to the brilliant Stuart Cater and we're hoping to be able to offer these installs to our customers in the next few months. It's been a really interesting couple of days. Very grateful to Stuart for taking the time to show us all this works. We'll jump down to the garage and have a little look at some of the control items I guess and the inverter and how it's all wired together on an AC and DC um, system. I'll show you that in just a sec. It's a 8 kilowatt system but the panels are split across the roof in different orientations so they're not all generating at peak times together so it's only ever going to peak to a maximum of just under 6 kilowatts. That's why it's a 6 kilowatt inverter. It's physically impossible unless we start orbiting the sun in a different way for it ever to not be the case. It's perfectly ample on this instance. As you can see here again, isolates for the AC, isolates for the DC, into the main board. Obviously a lot of this other wiring is all existing and the strings up to the loft. So that's the end of another day. We're heading off back home now. We've got about a five hour drive. We're just queuing up to the Dartford Crossing. And for those of you who are familiar with the M25 and queuing for the Dartford Crossing, we're heading anti-clockwise to go through the tunnels and there's about a 40 minute wait, which is fantastic. But yeah, we've had a good day working with Stuart up on the roof. That will be as a video all of its own. Tomorrow, we're just gonna go and finish off a few little bits that we showed you the other week um, doing some plasterboarding. So nothing really electrical based, but we will be cutting out around some accessories. So if you ever get involved in new build or whatever, and you need to cut your own boxes out for the borders, it happens if you're working in small crews on um, refurb works especially, we'll show you a bit of that tomorrow until then we'll catch you later <coughs> so it's friday and we've just jumped on this one to try and push it along a little bit it's the remodel thing i showed you the other week so it's a bit of a refurb i'll spin a little look we've got some insulation in now on the top here we've been doing some of the boarding in here so that's got insulation lats behind it and also the damp proof membrane behind the timbers and the plastic sheeting on the inside as well so we're not letting any water penetrate it's foil back plasterboard so we're all good to go there. Got our sockets cut out. I'll show you the new tool we've got for that. Actually, this little thing down here, that is absolutely fantastic. The DeWalt plaster bar cutter. If you haven't tried one before, definitely give those a go. They zip out your cutouts in no time whatsoever. Much better than a pad saw or um, uh, oscillating saw. I'll show you this here with a bit to tackle. So we need to get these windows out. We're putting double glazed ones in. We've packed this out with insulation. Obviously we still need to do the ceiling of the external wall and then put the plastic sheeting on the inside as well. But we're trying to use thicker insulation here. We may even put another sheet on again and bring our timbers out because we want to make it a little bit deeper, not just for the added um, insulation properties, but also just to make nicer inside. So we could have a little windowsill on there maybe. Um, this is all coming together inside. I'll show you. Oh, got a storm going out here. So it's thundering. Hopefully the SPD don't get put to the test in a second and we get a bit of lightning. This is our rubbish pile here, we're still waiting for the skip to arrive. So that's all been stacked up out there as nicely as we can for the time being. I'll just shut that. And you see again, I've got the plasterboard. I've come out to a wider angle. I've got our fixings on. Um, we've not put the ceiling up in here first because we've got a measure for the spotlight cutouts. Um, so really you would normally put your ceilings on and then plasterboard up to them, but we've not done that on this side. We will on the other side. It's just because we're, we're not plaster resort builders. We're electricians and sometimes you get things in the wrong order, but there you go, you live and learn. Um, in this side, we have got the plasterboard up to the ceiling. This is the other got from DeWalt that we've been using, the um, screw gun. Setting the depth on it was a bit tricky to get going, but once we've got the knack of that, it's absolutely flown these screws in. Gone in lovely, so we've got the um, Timco stainless ones here, and we've also got some of the plasterboard ones from DeWalt that are a little bit longer. Uh, that's kind of it. This is a little bit of a, a labour of love on this job, so um, we're not doing it in a professional capacity as such. It's other other stuff we're involved with. So yeah, it's um, going to come together nicely in the end. We're kind of working with the structure as it is. None of the ceilings are square and level. The old concrete roof was cast in funny little sections, so there's ridges and bumps all over. The brickwork's out by miles, so we're, we're making the best of it. If you look in this little toilet room here as well, we can't get anything like the... 
king span into the wall we wanted but if we make it any narrower you can't fit the toilet in to then be able to use it in its intended purpose so it is what it is there we've packed out the back with double layers of insulation can't really do too much on this side either and again we've just limited it to a single spotlight in here so we're going to put one of the big 10 watt dimmable um, fittings in and the reason for that is just to try not to disturb too much of the king span in the ceiling to keep it nice and solid and we've got our extractor pre-marked and cut you'll be able to see up there Otherwise, I hope you've enjoyed the week. It's been quite varied. We've had a lot on. You've seen us upon Roos doing solar panels. And again, there's a video of that of its own right dropping after this one. So it'll be the next video following. You can see how we got on with that. Um, we've had the flood repair damage, I think. We've gotten all sorts of drive back from Cardiff. There's loads of bits in this one. If you're enjoying these, give it a thumbs up. Please like and subscribe to the channel. And we'll see you on the next episode of Power Sonic Weekly.